Hello, welcome to the Harvest Money Show. I am your host, Jackie Achan. Now today, we want to take a look at the world of Hass avocado farming in Uganda. We visit the Renzori region where Biosentic has established an avocado farm where they produce about 12,000 tons of avocado on a daily basis. When it comes to cooking oil, avocado oil is considered one of the finest in the world. In fact, some rate it above olive oil, which is considered queen of oils. But when it comes to avocado oils, others have termed it the king of oils. You can actually make a lot of farming out of avocado farming here in Uganda. So we are taking a look at how you can farm has avocado in Uganda, taking a look at what Biosynthetic is doing in the Rezori region. So without wasting so much time, let's get the show started. The reason for avocado oil's esteem status is its exceptional high smoke point ranging from 470 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it the safest choice for cooking at high temperatures. Its versatility shines through in various culinary applications, including baking, roasting, sauteing, or frying food. Today, we are tuning in to the Harvest Money Show on Urban TV, where our focus is squarely on avocado farming. Our journey takes us to the attractive Renzori region with a particular spotlight on Kasese district. Join us as we explore the remarkable success of Haas avocado farming in this vibrant region. Father Modest Kasenyagwa Masereka, the clergyman leading Kasanka Catholic Parish in Kasese District, launched an initiative targeting the issue of youth and Christian unemployment in his community. Instead of relying solely on rhetoric, his strategy centered on delivering practical lessons in line with the local school curriculum. It is through this endeavor that the inspiring achievements of the Haas Avocado Project have risen and here he shares the origin of cultivating avocados in the Renzori region. I was blessed uh, after um, my ordination as a priest um, to get a connection uh, and within the connection uh, to, to Europe uh, there came a person uh, who came up and we were always arguing, uh, talking about giving aid, giving grants, giving, you know, and the question was how many times or how often will people in Europe give grants to people in Africa? And when will people in Africa come up? And so, uh, as we urged, we thought of, um, we should start a production unit. A production unit, when the students come out of the classroom, they should be able to participate, to show out their gifts, uh, the knowledge they have acquired uh, from the formal education and so we thought of uh, at one time we were thinking of uh, having a hydro dam because there is a lot of, of water here the small waterfalls but it didn't work out and then later I started uh, suggesting uh, maybe why not a food product uh, where we can, you know, manipulate something that is nutritious to the people, that is healthy to the people. And eventually, as we were reading news around the world, we saw that 
the avocado was gaining a very good uh, momentum at the world level, uh, its production being, you know, adding value to it. And uh, uh, finally we came to that, we said, why can't we try the avocados? And I remember one time, not only one time, but three times I carried avocados from here uh, to Europe and they were put in a, a laboratory and uh, they were testing whether it can work out. And so when it, it worked out, so the other gentleman across there said that I think it is very potential, we must start. And this is how it came. Of course also looking at the economic stand of the Christians as a priest, uh, you know, it is very interesting when Christians gather, first of all, the very first point is that they pray. And prayer is in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to, 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 to our God, what he does, what uh, for his protection. But at the same time when people gather for a prayer, it is necessary that as they thank God spiritually, they need also to make a material contribution. And for me, I always think that a Christian who is all around, who goes to pray, should be able also to make a contribution towards the welfare of his or her church. And therefore, it would be unfortunate if a, a Christian went to the church and would fail, would be embarrassed. Actually, there are some songs, for example, if they are sung in a church and you don't offer, you feel embarrassed before you are good. So I thought the Christians, and I still believe, and it is my conviction that Every, every priest, every religious leader must be able, and it is an obligation, to empower the Christians, to empower them spiritually, and to empower them also materially. Upon reaching Kasanka Parish in Kasese District, where the nursery bed is located, we asked Reverend Father Kasenyagwa Masereka about the inception of the farm and the motivating factors behind its establishment. It is uh, like three years ago, we were preparing, trying to plant, uh, to establish a nursery bed, thinking of uh, beginning the production and uh, uh, here we are now we have a nursery bed and the factor has been uh, uh, also uh, installed in Kasese and uh, well what was behind was first of all uh, that people appreciate their nature you know mother earth should be uh, appreciated because we, li we live on this earth. Without the earth, we cannot exist. And uh, I wanted that people should appreciate that if we use the soil, we can be better. We transitioned from Kasanka Parish, where the nursery bed is situated, to Nsenyi Parish, where the primary garden is found. During our conversation with Reverend Father Godfrey Sandy, the parish priest, he emphasized that their participation in the project was driven by the goal of establishing a self-sustaining initiative for the parish. Today, they are celebrating their inaugural house avocado harvest 
marking a significant achievement. As a parish, we welcomed the project because we needed self-sustaining. We needed a self-generating project as a parish. So we welcomed it and we thought uh, this would help us. And indeed, uh, today we have the first harvest and we see that's doing well. And uh, with time, even the community, they are happy with what is taking place. We have invited the community members to come and see what Biocentric is and what we do and the progress. And now we are harvesting. We, I see success. Father Peter Insingoma Katiramo, who serves as the assistant parish priest of Nsenyi and also manages Nsenyi Farm, said the Biocentric project has proven to be a resounding success significantly enhancing the quality of life for the residents of Nsenyi Parish. By now, we have 50 farmers that are participating and trying to grow the kettles. And we have planted around 500 trees. So we expect at the harvest, which, our, which has already begun, around two tons in our production of avocados. And I encourage all Christians, especially in the Kasese district, even in our parish, to plant more avocados because it is a clear source of income to support even as, as church in general. During our trip to Nsenyi Haas Avocado Farm, we discovered that the farmers there were receiving instructions on optimal avocado harvesting techniques and how to properly care for their avocado trees during the harvesting season. We also had the opportunity to interview the person in charge of these farmers who explained the reason behind their visit to the farm. At this farm, we have 300 trees that are growing. The old ones that have started fruiting are 245. The ones that are fruiting, the one we are harvesting for the first time. The trees we are harvesting are, for, are 245, of which not all are bearing the fruits. And these trees are two years and one month. They were planted in the early June 2021. The, the, average, the average fruits per tree are almost are like 100 fruits. However, we defruited some because the trees, they were too young to handle the overwhelming number of fruits. And we are doing so in order to have the fruits of big size. That's why you had to remove some fruits in order to, to prevent the tree from doing fruit abortion as a result of overbearing. So I'm um, with the farmers, one of our group, a group of our farmers who are outgrowers under Caritas Kasese, which is under Senyi Parish. We are demonstrating to them on how they harvest and how harvesting is done. Nile Kedo promotes avocado cultivation in Uganda primarily aiming to motivate, engage, and educate in videos about the emerging avocado industry in the country. During our conversation with Katerega Uthman, Operations Director, Niall Kedo Limited, he elaborated on the significance of avocado farming, its market potential, and the key participants in Haas avocado cultivation. Avocado in Africa. The biggest produce of avocado in Africa is in Kenya. But the market is in Europe. But we are also trying to create the local market. Because Africa has a problem. We think that we must do production, sell the raw materials to Europe, do the processing, 
and then Europe exposed Africa. <laughs> um, since avocado is a fruit, we, it, it has also a lot of things that it's doing. It can, do, it can do as food, it can do as gargamel, it can do as, uh, they can do processing and they do avocado oil, there is Vaseline, there is a lot in, in avocado. So it is, that's why it is called the green gold or the new green gold in Africa and in the world. The reason why it's a green gold because it has everything. It is the gold of the new era. Um, the key issue to us as Nael Kado is to tell the world the market. In Uganda, we have Musubi Farm, where we launched with the form by then a former speaker of parliament, Rebecca Kadaga. And we launched a 2,000 acre farm in Mayugi, which they are currently doing almost well, and they have an avocado factory, an avocado oil factory, and they are establishing a pack house. So the eastern region is covered with, hustle, with the market. When you come in the central, we, we also, I, as a consultant, we came in central Uganda and Zimbabwe and established Kanisa. They are actually mobilizing farmers and they are doing over, their target is over two to 5,000 farmers. And their role is also to establish a pack house and avocado oil in, in, in Greater Masaka. In Kampala, in Namambi, we have uh, a volume. Say the, 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 the proprietor is a journal, and they are doing 10 tons per hour avocado. Currently, they are doing local avocado. But they are also now buying Hass because Hass has a very good oil content. So there is a market. If you have your avocados and you don't have the market, in Namave there is a volume. If you look at Luero, we have Moringa Frontiers. Moringa Frontiers has almost 10, or sorry, five tons per hour avocado. They are establishing. And at the same time in Nakaseke, we have Barrage. Barrage, they are also so much, they have now four tons per hour and they are establishing a pack house for export. We have uh, in the, uh, Chenjojo, we have uh, Njojo farm. They have 500 cages per hour. And I mean, they are doing well. Uh, the people are going to receive. Here, why they are establishing avocado? Because the first avocado has two classes it has grade A and grade B. But in Uganda, currently we are doing grade, grade B and grade A. But grade B is more because we are not establishing so much uh, our, our orchards. So most avocado oil factories have established to make sure that at the first harvests and all avocados that will not go for export can go to factories. That's why we have these factories. Uh, Nile Kado, Nile Kado, for us we are in Gomba. We are also soon establishing our own pack house in Mutundwe. In Kampala, but our uh, our production place and the demonstration is in Gomba. But as since we are advocating for people to plant, we partnered with Biocentric Uganda, and Biocentric Uganda is establishing has already established a factor of two tons per hour. So which means that every day they can do more than twenty tons of avocados. So we are searching for us, and we cannot even get it. Actually, we have now an order to Europe as Biocentric to make sure that within two weeks we have the 20 ton avocado and we are buying grade B. During our interview with Florian Noas, the country director of Biocentric Uganda, he mentioned that they currently require 12 tons of avocados daily. However, they are facing a shortage of supply from local farmers. As a result, they have made the decision to incorporate other varieties of avocados to sustain their operations. At the moment, they are in partnership with 600 farmers and their objective is to broaden their network to encompass 600 farmers in the Renzori region. Uh, currently, we're mainly buying uh, local avocados. 
because the market is not there for Hass avocado. The market is there, but the fruits are not there. So we started with local avocados, mainly from Cassese district, uh, but we're also looking in the other directions from Cassese towards Fort Portal, towards Bujeni, so that we can feed our machine with uh, 12 tons every day, 12 tons of fresh fruits. For now they are available, but uh, we are yet to find out how long the season lasts, how long we can produce. But we estimate that this year we will produce up to December. The machine can take two tons per hour, two tons of fresh fruits. So uh, it depends on how many shifts we work. If we work 24 hours, we might be processing up to 30, 35 tons per day. Uh, the market for avocado oil is all over the world. It's uh, quite new oil on the market for edible oils, but it's very similar to olive oil, but it's even healthier and uh, the market is permanently growing every year by around 8%. So our main market might be the Middle East, but also especially Europe, uh, since we are from Germany. Also the German market is very much of interest for us. We are assuring our uh, farmers a 100% insured market. Um, our plan is for the beginning to at least export one container per month. And uh, one container per month means around 100, 150 tons of avocados. And uh, currently we're buying, as we said, 12 tons per day, but this is just the beginning of our production. We have big plans for the end of the season and especially next year, where we would like to produce every day uh, 24 hours to send two to three containers per month. But basically from our point of view, the market is not Exhausted yet worldwide, uh, avocado oil is uh, under big interest all over the world. Uh, so we have a secure market for the farmers of Uganda. We need your avocados and uh, we want to process them here in our facility. According to Nick Harry, the market and sales manager at Biosyntec Uganda, scientists may favor olive oil, but he consistently emphasizes that avocado is the true king. He does so due to the unique properties embedded in avocado oil. Therefore, he is encouraging farmers in Uganda, particularly those in the Renzori region, to cultivate Haas avocado in substantial quantities if they wish to maximize their earnings. Would you like more money? Would you like to go internationally? Please plant Haas. Please plant Haas. For food ready to eat, okay, we may sell varieties, local varieties. But for oil, let's go internationally. Let's think internationally. And if you want to go internationally, if you want more money, let's plant Haas. Because Haas is the best. Uh, variety for our avocado oil. Our avocado oil is uh, much better than olive oil. Okay, olive oil has its properties and characteristics, but avocado oil is even better in many, many things. A very, uh, a very good scientist from Europe said, no, 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 olive, olive, it will be always what is the process by which avocado oil is extracted and brought to the market we are producing avocado oil from uh, for now we are producing from uh, the local varieties though we intend to to deal with the uh, has avocado because uh, the has the has variety uh, gives quite uh, a lot more of uh, the, the oil compared to the local varieties and um, yeah why uh, at the factory when we receive the the, the, the avocado uh, it goes through quite a number of processes uh, and uh, the very first one being uh, sorting when we receive we, we sort and also check to ensure that it meets the standard that we are looking for we want uh, them uh, mature enough, mature that uh, it can be eaten when it gets ripe. The, the maturity that 
you will want on the table. And that's when it gives uh, the best uh, quality and the right amounts of oil. So we sought to remove the damages, uh, the diseased, yeah, and, and also removing filth. Yeah, so when, when we are done with that, we wash, we wash the fruits to ensure that we are removing any debris uh, we are, and, and any other contaminants that could have come from the field with uh, the, the, the avocado. So once that is done, we now uh, proceed to uh, ripening the fruits. Uh, we, this is done in our warehouse and under monitored conditions to ensure that we get maximum uh, uh, the appropriate uh, rate of ripening and also to, to minimize uh, spoilage. Yeah, so after ripening, now the fruits proceed to production where we, we now uh, crush them to produce the oil and this uh, goes through a uh, process of crushing, removing the skin and the seeds so that we, only, we are only left with uh, the pulp. It's the pulp that gives us the oil. So um, f uh, f the, the pulp is uh, sent to, actually this is, the, the process of separating the seed and uh, the other residues is done in the machine called the, the distoner. It helps to remove uh, those other things I've mentioned. And so the pulp is sent to Malaxa. This Malaxa is the machine that now actually does the actual uh, process of making sure that we extract as much oil as we can under, under strict monitoring of temperatures because actually the process we are doing is uh, called processing. It involves uh, producing the oil at, temp at low temperatures such that uh, the, the qualities of the oil and especially the nutritional properties are not tampered with and yeah, uh, if you've read about this, uh, avocado oil is actually the healthiest oil, especially among the, oil, the edible oils. So the Malaxa helps in, in that, such that uh, the, the, the pulp is broken further and sufficiently to produce the oil. Investing in has avocado farming is a valuable choice for anyone considering agriculture as a business venture regardless of their current income level. This is because it offers lower risks, minimal input costs, easy maintenance, and a readily available global market. Putting your money into Haas Avocado cultivation can essentially serve as your retirement plan. The avocado industry is both captivating and promising with new markets, prospects, and products emerging regularly. Well, I believe we have been able to gain so much knowledge on how to do pass avocado farming in Uganda. Uganda now produces two tons of Hass avocado on a daily basis. And Hass avocado actually is considered to have high oil content compared to the local varieties we produce here in Uganda. And I think it's about time that most of us venture into Hass avocado farming to make a living out of it. That has been it for the Harvest Money Show this time round. I have been your host, Jackie Chan. Until next time, goodbye.